by the storms of life. How can I live a life of blessings? Believe that all things are possible through Christ. Well, we are continuing our series on Through Christ. As we uh, have been going through this series, what we've been doing is been taking a look at a lot of the issues that we might think are kind of out of reach for most of us. So what we've been doing is taking a look at what Scripture has to say, that through Christ, all things are possible. Now, I, a lot of these things that we've talked about so far are issues that we may easily take for granted, or maybe we think that they're far too out of reach. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the fact that we can have faithful children. However, the overall theme here is that through Christ, nothing is out of reach. We've talked about things uh, uh, such as that we can trust God to go beyond our dreams. We understand that God will answer prayer when we reshape our prayer life into his plan. We understand that we can survive the storms of life uh, that when we embrace Christ, even in the midst of our storms. We talked about the fact that we can have healthy marriages by making our relationships more holy than they've ever been. And today we're going to be talking about having faithful children uh, by uh, reaching the children takes love and prayer as well. So let's take a, a look at this whole idea of raising children. Now I'm looking now at, at a lot of you here and I I don't know if too many of you are currently raising children or not. But the way I'm defining raising children, they may be your own children. Anyone have any kids of their own? At all? Even grown children, perhaps? Are you, have you stopped raising them yet? <laughs> You have grandchildren. They'll look to you for all, for all kinds of love and support. Do you have local neighbor kids who look to you that you want to pour out love and, and to be a mentor and to pass on good, wholesome values? You see, this is not just an issue of raising your children from the age of somewhere around five by the time they're teenagers and they don't listen to you anyway. Now we're talking about being a good parenting throughout your life to anyone who's around you. A lot of these principles still apply. The first thing we need to understand behind this is the fact that children need to make their own choices. They will make their own choices. Some of them will be great choices and you won't be more proud. Some of them sometimes are going to make really bad choices and you can be more disappointed. Am I right? Hey, can anyone here relate to that? Well, the issue is that they are their choices. They're not your choices. So what we can do is we can help them through this whole decision-making process. And we're basically going to be hitting around three basic topics today, uh, but they all, all revolve around these two basic ideas. First of all, you need to love them unconditionally. You need to love them entirely. When they look at you, they should see in your eyes the fact that they're the apple of your eye. You can't wait to see them. You love them beyond anything. There's nothing you can do to keep them from loving you. You should love the kids as God loves you. You should look at them and tell them, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. But let me help you make some good choices. The second thing is to cover them in prayer. Cover them from prayer when the time you find out that the baby's on the way up until the time where you take your, your last breath. You should cover them in prayer entirely. Now, along the way, we have some, what I would call some pretty practical things to think about. First of all, we must surround our children with Scripture. Now, that does not mean you just stencil scripture on the walls, okay? I'm not saying that's a bad thing. If you like that, that's awesome. But it's more than just that. What I mean is surround them in scripture by reading to them, telling them Bible stories, and more importantly, letting them know that you read your Bible. Let them know that you actually surround yourself, that you go to scripture for your problems and your solutions. 
Let them know that you mirror the life that God plans because you dig into the word yourself. You know, that's probably one of the most important things. And this is uh, a passage from uh, uh, 2 Timothy that really seems to hammer that home. The Apostle Paul was admonishing Timothy to say, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of because, because you know who you've learned it. And from the time you were an infant, you've known the Holy Scriptures. You've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation in Jesus Christ. So you've got to start very young when you, when, you talk about the kid, when you talk about Scripture. In fact, you should be praying for them and telling them about Scripture and leading that in your own life. I would also hope that as you go through this, that everything you would do, you would surround that child in love, in love. Whether or not uh, the kid is doing really well at something, and you want to celebrate their victory, or whether or not they're doing something kind of okay well, and you wish they'd do better. you got to set the proper uh, expectations for small kids. Sometimes it's really easy to expect more out of children than what uh, they're actually producing. You ever found that to be true? Hmm? By the time time they're two, don't you think they should be able to pick up their own toys without being told? I mean, come on. I I mean, what's wrong with you, kid? No, 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 no. Don't you look at me like that. How many times have you had a kid who you walk out of a a room that was absolutely spotless and you come back 10 minutes later and and it's like a tornado hit it, huh? No one can relate to that except me? Uh, you got to be kidding. Oh, well, that is one of those things that uh, is it wrong to leave uh, a room messy? Is that a wrong thing to do? No. It's a kid thing to do. So what you need to do is you need to teach them to pick up their toys. Let's do it together. You know, there's sometimes, I I was talking to a parent in one of my churches who said that it seems like every single night I put the kids to bed and then I got to clean up their room. What does that teach them? They go to bed with a messy room and they wake up and it's clean. Hey, it's magic. (laughs) No, what you need to do is you need to instruct them, but with love and kindness and don't hold expectations that are too high. Oh, I read a book right before, uh, right before I became a parent. Actually, I became a parent and a pastor at the same time, so I was really trying to weave uh, what it is to be a parent in with a, a Christian worldview. And one of the interesting things, uh, um, one of the interesting things that was said in all of that is that you need to understand who they are and where they are. And it kind of dawned on me. And from that point on, whenever I picked up my kids or even other kids, I said, you're, uh, aren't you just acting like a little baby? And you're so good at it. You see what I mean? They're supposed to be kids. So you treat them like kids, but at the same time, you, treat, you instill in them the values. Sometimes you need to discipline kids. And that is a good and godly thing to do, am I right? It would be wrong if you didn't discipline them. But you need to do it with love and kindness and grace. Yes, even when you discipline them. In that same book I read, it says, never discipline out of anger. Is it? Well, I actually said that in a sermon many, many years ago. It says, well, when else are you supposed to discipline them? (laughs) Well, okay, I get it. I know what you're saying. However, if you discipline out of anger, what are you teaching the kids? To fear your anger and not teaching them to be better. Now, believe me, I do not claim to have always done this perfectly, but I did make some decisions that I tried to follow through with most of the time, and that was to discipline any of my children away from everyone else. Most of the time, we took them to my room and shut the door. And then I sat down on my lap after I had calmed down, okay, explained what they did was wrong, explain why, and sometimes there had to be consequences. Now, the consequences should match whatever they did. Sometimes it's a timeout, sometimes it's go to your room, sometimes it's no TV for X number of time, and sometimes it was a swat on the brump. But no matter what it is, you can't do it out of anger. 
And whenever the consequences were over, whenever I let them down out of their room or they could turn the TV back on, whatever the case may be, or even after I had to swat them on the behind, I'd pick them up, hold them in my arms, and tell them how much I love them. To understand that you should not be disciplining out of your anger, but disciplining them for a purpose. One of uh, the things that I really uh, love about uh, Scripture is that when we instill Scripture in our children's lives, I think we should also be doing it in our own, right? And I just love the fact that I've hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Now, of course, in this case, we're talking about kids, but honestly, aren't we talking about our own selves, too? Shouldn't we have Scripture in our hearts all the time? Maybe we should be memorizing more and more Scripture as we go so that we have Scripture wherever we are. We don't need to have our Bible with us, but we have the Word of God in our hearts. So the first thing, of course, we need to do is surround our children in Scripture. But the other part of it, what we need to do, is when dealing with Scripture, we need to, or dealing with kids, we need to be patient. We need to be patient. We need to make sure the expectations are in the right place. It is so easy to put the expectations so high that sometimes you may have forgotten what it was like to be that age. You only know what you should be doing now. And you know, how come the kids aren't doing that by now? And then it's so easy for you to get emotional and for you to get out of control. Especially uh, when the kids start to be that, that weird honking teenage age, right? How many people have been, had uh, kids through teenagers, right? Believe me, I know what it's like to have rebellious teenagers. Because I was one of them. <laughs> actually, my kids were actually pretty good through their weird teenage years. But I tell you, I, I went through all kinds of weird struggles. I went through all kinds of things where I thought, blah, 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 blah. The details are unimportant. Um, but most of the time, I thought that whatever I did, this had to be the right way because I was convinced of it. That only makes sense, right? So you need to be patient. When they start to make mistakes, yes, we need to point out the mistakes. We need to say, Here, here's where you probably went, uh, went awry, and here's where the consequences were. And now let's think about how to change that. Does that make sense? What you shouldn't do is beat your kids over the head with how bad they were. Now, please hear me out on this, okay? This may actually sound a little counterintuitive, but most of the time when kids screw things up or mess up or make some really poor choices, most of the time they know it. You know what I mean? Even if they try to defend themselves, most of the time, they know what they did was wrong. (laughs) One time I got uh, caught uh, getting out of school, Uh, well, before the bell, Uh, without permission, Uh, when I should have been in class. Now, did I know what I did was wrong? Of course, that's what made it fun, right? Yeah, all right, let's see if we can get out of here and no one will ever know. Oh, shoot, yeah, that would be the big deal. What does it matter that my mom's a teacher? What does it matter that she's in the building? Ah, shoot, I'm, more, I'm smarter than everyone else put together, right? Now, I may have thought that. I may have said that to my friends. And when we got in trouble because of it, guess what? Do you think I knew that I was wrong? Of course I did. What I would have preferred to do is to say, all right, I did it. What's my punishment? What I didn't need is people to tell me how bad it was because then I got on the defensive. Then I'd start to say, well, who's to tell you? All those things that go along with it. Instead of understanding we need to be patient. We need to show love at all times. And the Apostle Paul uh, writes this in Colossians. Interestingly enough, he didn't have kids, but he sure had a lot of wisdom. He said, children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. But fathers and mothers, don't embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. And when they become discouraged, they no longer want to try. They no longer want to reach out. They no longer want to please you and God at the same time. 
What we need to do is we need to encourage, continually encourage, even when they make a mistake, encourage them to do well next time. Even when they choose something poorly, encourage them to make another choice next time. Yes, they need to have discipline and consequences and all those things, okay? But just simply to rag on them about how bad they are, all that means is, why even try? The Apostle Paul, again, he says in Ephesians this time, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up and train them in instruct, uh, uh, tra- tra- training and instruction of the Lord. So even when things seem to be going off track, even when they're, they're trying to run their life into the ground, you can always say, no, 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 I don't want to drive you away. I want to lead you on the proper path. However, there are times when kids get themselves into a great deal of trouble. I'm not going to ask anyone to show hands on this, okay? But there are times when kids make really terrible choices. Sometimes they can get involved with drugs, which leads to all kinds of other things. Sometimes it can end up in prison or rehab or maybe even hurting your grandchildren. Believe me, I know it's out there. And if it's out there, I know it's in the church. I want to to make it clear from one point that just because you are Christian parents does not guarantee, does not guarantee that your children will end up uh, continually following the path you laid out for them. That doesn't make you a bad parent because they mess up. Let me ask you this. Has anyone here ever heard someone else say, oh, I can't believe this kid did that. They came from such a good household. Anyone ever hear that? Okay. Because the end result is every kid makes their own choice. What you need to do is don't cut them off. Don't keep them at a distance. Don't withdraw your love because of what they've done. And we have hope in this. We have hope in this. This is probably the most hopeful thing I can think about raising children. Our children may drift, but they tend to come back home. And I don't mean when they're 40 years old, they move into your basement, okay? I'm not saying that. It might happen, but that's not what I mean by that. My my point is, even when they drift away from the path that you would really want them to be on, oftentimes they tend to drift back to the path by themselves. You know, every person needs to test their own choices, Sometimes when their choices lead to disastrous consequences, they're smart enough to realize, you know, that's probably not the best place. And maybe I ought to lean back to the life that I really do want. You see, what we try to do is we try to set up a life where, they say, where we tell our children, this is the life that you should want too. And they say, no, I want a different life with lots of excitement and really cool things. And sometimes that can lead to disaster. But most of the time they realize, you know, the life my parents had wasn't so bad after all. So they have a tendency to go back to the earliest teachings that you gave them. But let me caution you on this. I've heard a lot of really good, faithful Christian parents who have kids that have made drastic, terrible mistakes, terrible choices that have led to, um, well, let's just say disastrous things. And I've heard them say things like this. They are now out of my life. No, I won't have them in my life ever again. All they do is wreak havoc wherever they touch, and I'm not going to have them around me ever again. I even had a good Christian parent say to me, my child is dead to me. That doesn't really help them to come back. Do you know what I mean? Now, 
please understand what I'm saying here is not that if they are a drug dealers and they just got out of prison that you should welcome them back and have them deal drugs out of your basement, okay? But what I'm saying is the love for them and your prayer cover over them should continue no matter what they've done, no matter where they are. You should continue to offer love. You should still continue to say, I'm still your mom or your dad or the one who loves you dearly. Because one day you might be surprised that if they know the door of love is still open to them, they might come back. The Bible bears that out in a couple of different ways, and I just want to share with you one way. This is from Proverbs, where it says, Train a child on the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Sometimes that means that they did turn from it when they were young, okay? And later on, they realized what I really wanted is what I was raised with. Now, I've said that a couple of times. I do want to make one thing very clear, okay? First of all, that if you were raised in a household that wasn't very healthy, maybe you were raised in a place where there was anger and abuse and struggles and things like that, that doesn't mean that you need to raise your children in the same way you were raised, okay? What I am saying here is this. This is probably the most important thing about raising children, comparing it to the way you were raised. Learn from the way you were raised. Look at the things that your mom and dad did that were were good and healthy and emulate those things. But also learn from the ways that you were treated poorly and make decisions. Don't just react the way your parents did, but think what's best and then act the way it should be. You're going to make mistakes. Of course you are. Then tell your kids. Don't necessarily uh, raise your children the way I did. Raise the children the way I did well. And don't raise them when I messed up. Because in the end, we always want the door open for them to come back again. Yeah, I know there are times when you want to pull your hair out. I know that there are times, when, we, especially when they're in their teenage years, that uh, you may want to lock them up in a cage until they, until they grow up a little bit. But the truth of the matter is most of the time they do grow up a little bit. And most of the time they really do want to come back again. People here know Mark Twain, don't you? Mark Twain, the author? He also had a lot of great witticisms, and this is uh, 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 one of those witticisms that I think makes a whole lot of sense to me. It goes something like this. When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand the old man, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much he had learned in the seven years. Now, of course, you know what he's saying here is that he realized, looking back, when he was 14, he was kind of a smart aleck little kid who didn't know what he was talking about. And when he was 21, he realized, you know something? I didn't know what I was talking about, but my dad did. And that's one thing that we have lots of hope, don't don't you think? No matter where your kids are, maybe your kids um, are grown, married, have their own kids. Oftentimes they will still give you a call and say, Mom, Dad, I need some advice. What do I do about this? And now is a great chance to say, well, you know, when you were a kid, I didn't do this very well. But you can. The last thing I'd like to leave with all of us is this important point. If you mess up as a parent, come and ask for forgiveness from your kids. Even when they're young. To say, hey, honey, I blew off, I, I, I blew my top. I went off the handle. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And you'd be surprised 
How many times your kids would look up at you and say, of course I forgive you. Even when they have kids of their own. Even when the time comes where they've messed up their life and they want to come back. Always have your arms open wide. Ready to offer all the love they need. And believe me, you continue to show love You continue to cover them in prayer. And the odds are, in the end, you might have faithful kids, even in a culture that is working against you. Let me encourage you all to show love, to show grace, to show patience, to lead with Scripture. And you might be surprised at how great your kids turn out. Before we go, let's just have a time of prayer where we can pray for all of our kids and all of our parenting, even now. Let's pray together, shall we? Most gracious and holy Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. Oh, Lord, we love you and adore you. As we come to you today, Lord, we lift up to you uh, those kids who are in our lives, whether they're our own natural kids, grandkids, neighbor kids, whoever they may be. Let us, O oh Lord, show love and grace and patience with all the hopes that they may return after all. Lord, I pray that they would never make the same mistakes we did, but, O oh Lord, when they make their own mistakes... Let us continually welcome them with our arms wide open, both now and forever. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.